DPs are thinking about, and you will see those questions as we go through. Um, the Georgia Memory Net Evaluation, um, I uh, lead up our kind of population health analytics. I do a lot of work around what does the population of Georgia look like, and then uh, work around the big data and the numbers pieces. Um, and then in a minute, uh, Dr. Bender will introduce herself. And um, the third party that um, was unable to attend today is Dr. Uh, Molly Perkins. She works with our CSEs and our CSE core, and she really works on that piece of how are we engaging our caregivers, our families um, of our patients. And so that is her, her overview. Um, and so I think Dr. Bender is going to talk about what we're going to do today during this session. Hi, good morning. Um, so as Dr. Moore mentioned, I'm Alexis Bender. I'm one of the evaluators with Georgia MemoryNet. Uh, my role, uh, as she mentioned, we kind of have a three-way three group. We're kind of like three legs of a stool. And um, so my portion is really to understand the process and implementation side of things. So what are things that we can do better? What are some of our pinch points, some of the barriers that people are facing when implementing the programs? And so we want to hear from you, how can we make our program better to meet the needs of PCPs, um, both in the referral system, the processing, the education, all of those things. So today, we thought, well, we could just sit here and have some conversation about it, but we thought, let's, let's play with technology. This might go really well, and it might not, so bear with us. Um, so we have some individual questions that we're going to go through, and um, as you can see, we already have our word cloud going on where people are from. Um, I saw Miranda Moore up here. That was interesting. Miranda Moore 305. <laughs> I don't know who's from Miranda Moore, but... Um, so we'll go through these. Some of these are kind of multiple choice questions. Some are word clouds. We'll talk through them. We want to hear from you. We don't want you know, we love that we can put this in our phones, but we're going to ask you some follow-up questions too. Like, tell us more about this. Um, then we also have, just to change it up a little bit, on your table there's an iPad, one per table. If you don't have one and you want to participate, you might need to squeeze in, just because we don't have enough iPads for every table. These are for some team trivia. So if somebody at your table would go ahead and turn on that iPad, we're going to tell you the password. It's 2021, 2021. Get that ready. There'll be a new, um, it should already be loaded with the poll that's active. Do not answer that question, please, yet. It's already up, I think. Um, so anyway, we'll switch to that when we get there. You're going to answer those questions as a team table. So not individually, you have to work it through together. They're kind of fun, trivia about Georgia. Um, we do not have any prizes, though, so you're just playing for pride, <laughs> all right? Uh, sorry about that. So um, we'll get started with some of these questions. Um, so do you want to take the first one? Yeah. Kind of where people are from. Who's doing our slides? Um, it's back here. <laughs> yep, can we switch to the next question? So All we're right. starting off easy. How long have you been practicing? So these are individual. This is just, now we know you got surveys beforehand. You're going to get surveys afterwards. These are repeat questions. We're not keeping track of this. This is just so we know who's in the room, who are we talking to, um, just, you know, an understanding. Ooh. And so others in the room also know who they're interacting with through the rest of the time so that they can know. Oh, it's like a longevity challenge here. Oh, yes. Ooh, our 16 or more is winning. We're going to make it a competition. If you're having issues, raise your hand. They, if, um, this, this one up here. Yes, you are great. Other iPads, not so great. Random. If your iPad is not working, let it just wave it in the air. We'll come pick it up and. So the the um, login for the iPad is different than the one that's up here. Now we got switched. <laughs> <laughs> if, your, if your iPad is not working, just wave your hand. See, like I said, technology might not be our friend this morning. 
We're going to make it work. All right. So okay. I'll just move forward with this one while Miranda's helping with technology. So it looks like in the room, um, we don't have anyone that's been practicing less than a year. So we have some seasoned folks here. Um, that's great. We have almost 40% of you have been practicing for 16 years or more. So we have a lot to learn from you, and you have a lot to share with other folks in the room, especially those who are newer to practice. Can we go to the third? <laughs> Don't evaluate this activity, folks. <laughs> All right. Can we do the next slide on this one? All right. So we know where you're from. We know how long you've been practicing. What is your specialty? This is one on your phone. Yep. Right now, everything is your phone. Ooh. Oh, I don't know. So this is looking like we have a can lot I of family to, medicine. Can I, can I take your phone away? These are the percentages, so we don't know what your number is. So as more people add, primary care. Okay. We do have some others in the audience, a few neurology, some geriatrics, and some internal medicine. Okay. Okay. So welcome to everybody. Welcome to our yeah, others. In. As we're walking around. Who are others? Does someone want to say? Just shout it out. Ah, our awesome. community based Great. services. Fantastic. Public health. Public health. State services. Shout out to our bold and our team that helps to fund a lot of activities across Georgia. Welcome, we're happy to have you. Okay, we can go to the next question. What percentage of your patients over age 65 are likely to have a cognitive disorder? There's no right or wrong answer here. <laughs> so what do you think? looks like quite a few of you have a high burden of cognitive disorders in your elderly population. So you're in the right place. Thank you for coming. Um, but there are a few that have a lower, a lower percentage of those patients that are facing cognitive disorders. So it's good. Okay. But the vast majority of you, at least one-fifth of your population, one out of five of those older adults are facing some cognitive impairment issues. It's good to know. Okay, I don't have the Jeopardy song, but I would play the Jeopardy song. Here we go, right? We got it. Okay, right. let's grab those iPads. Okay. All right. Working together now. Using those iPads, 2021, 2021. I can't get that to go away, but 2021. And if yours says waiting, if you look up at the top and just click that refresh button. Oh, look at that. Just click that refresh button and it'll log you in. Let's see who can, who can tell. I'll read this out. Somebody answered for What was the nickname? of the largest hog ever discovered in Georgia? Was it Miss Piggy? Oh, somebody thinks it was Miss Piggy. Was it Hogzilla? Was it Porky Pig? <laughs> the Baconator. 
One of these is real. One of these is the correct <laughs> answer, and this is real life. This is, we didn't make it up, I promise. Oh. We did try to find the most esoteric <laughs> no trivia question we could Porky find, Pig. but it's for real. No one wants Porky Pig? Raise your hand if you have not answered. Raise your hand if you guessed B, Hogzilla. Hogzilla. Ding, ding, ding. You have one point. <laughs> keep, keep track of keep your points. Keep track for your non-prize. Some of these look like it was uh, like, we're gonna toss a coin and choose <laughs> one through four. So bonus question of those who know this, does anybody know how much it weighed? We have an 800, 1,200, I think it was 1,100 pounds. So oh. prices weren't rules, you win because you didn't go over, but. Okay, we'll go back to the other one now. Okay, and next question. Now shifting a bit, have you referred a patient to Georgia MemoryNet? The yeses are winning. Sorry about the technical <laughs> okay. So we have some in the room who have not referred, but it looks like a vast majority of you have referred. So that is a win for Georgia MemoryNet and getting the word out. Thank Yay. you for your referrals. All right, next question. For those of you who have not referred, and we know it's a smaller group than those of you who have, but why? What are some of the barriers that you faced when referring? We will say if you write multiple words, just put an underscore if you can, otherwise they get separated out. Dr. Hales taught us that one year to put the underscores. Um, so either like a one word answer or an underscore so the word stays together. Or you can just shout it out. Distance, okay. Distance from where you are to where a Mac is? Okay. Long wait times. Yeah. <coughs> Knowing how to refer. Okay, that's important, right? Where do you get the information? How do we get that information out to PCPs? Knowing, you know, the process for doing so. So this is a word cloud so that the more of you who enter the word, the bigger the word gets. So the word weight is really, is really showing up here. Wait, wait, wait. All right, this is helpful. Okay, next question. So in your practice, what is the biggest challenge that you face in screening patients for cognitive impairment? So some of these are you're not familiar with the tests, the appointments are too short, um, your patients are refusing to be screened. Um, you can screen, but you're not sure how to interpret, difficulty in differentiating, and then other challenges, or you just don't face any challenges. Appointment time. So really a systemic, like a systematic barrier, not something that you can easily change in your practice. And then difficulty differentiating your mild cognitive impairment from other age-related cognitive declines. So some information. Hopefully our, our people here that are experts in that, I'm looking at you all, can help with this while we're here this weekend. Mm -hmm. What are some other challenges that people are facing? Somebody, somebody, somebody put in other, something. just shout it out. <laughs> Right, right, so, and this kind of goes along with, you know, wait time, or appointment times, too. Like you have somebody come in and they have this long laundry list of things that need to be addressed, and in there is cognitive impairment, and where do you put that in your appointment time, right? So I just saw a presentation from CMS, and it said, what percentage, it gave the numbers, what percentage of Medicare beneficiaries that have Alzheimer's disease have only 
Alzheimer's disease and their chronic conditions. None? It's more than zero, more than zero. Get close, one more, 5%. So, uh-huh, multiple chronic conditions and timing of it and how do you manage all the medications mm -hmm. and everything and everything, okay? That's good to know, and you're not alone. All of your patients probably have it, so. All right. Next question. What do you find most challenging managing your patients who have ADRD? So we have medication management, providing management for the specific types, because they have different disease trajectories, different management, new medications coming online, who's eligible for what. <laughs> okay, I see providing community resource recommendations, mm. especially those rural areas, I'm sure, face some challenges there. These are all very fair challenges, right? Um, so once you get over the hurdle of screening, then managing these behaviors, uh, managing patients can be very difficult. Um, and so thinking about Georgia Memory Net, and you know, you're referring out, and hopefully these patients will come back to you. Um, if you're a referring provider, then you know we're kind of asking to do some of this management. Um, and so this is important for us to understand the things that you all will be facing or do face with your patients so that we can provide the right resources and education mm -hmm. for you. Um, all right, got some questions about uh, new antibody therapies. Uh, I know we'll cover that as well. All right, you wanna know more about Georgia? Should we go to a Georgia question Georgia, now that we're see, like, let's see. it's a lot of. I need some Jeopardy music. <laughs> All right, so back to your iPads. We've gotten Hogzilla. And next question. What town previously existed on the land that is now Lake Lanier? So for those of you that are not from Georgia, what you might not know is there was a town here um, that was flooded. It's a little problematic in Georgia's history. Um, it was primarily an African-American town. Um, flooded to create this beautiful lake that's here. So somebody thinks it's Oscarville. Somebody so thinks Sydneyville. it's Sydneyville. Alatuna. Alatuna. Has everyone answered? Forsyth. Yeah. Raise your hand if you haven't answered the iPad yet. Do, 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 do. I okay. think we've got it. We got it. Oscarville was the name Who of cheated? this town. <laughs> <laughs> Raise your hand if you got that one correct. Raise your hand. Yay. Shout out. All right. So how many of you have two of the trivia now? Got a couple. Okay, you guys are in a tie. All right, we don't have too many more, but thank you so much for your patience with our technology this morning um, and just getting to know you and the things that, that you're doing. So here we have another word cloud. What aspects of dementia care do you feel most comfortable managing? So we asked about your challenges, but what are the things that you're comfortable with, the things that you feel like you've got down um, as much as you can, <laughs> right? Emotional support, screening. So whoever said emotional support, can you, for the patient, for the caregivers, for your faculty and uh, staff. Like what, tell us a little Who bit said more that? about tell that. Tell us a little more about that. Somebody wrote it. <laughs> it's okay. We'll, we'll call on something else. Education, diagnoses, sleeping. So even though in the other question, there were challenges to screening patients, it looks like this is one of the things that people feel most comfortable with. So it can be a challenge and a, and a facilitator at the same time. Education, is that education again for the patient or for the family member? Both, okay. Staging care, okay. Support, okay. Providing guidance, communication with family. 
the big one. Mm -hmm. Anybody want to elaborate on any of these things? Share a little bit more. Okay, we'll move on to the next question. What do you feel the least comfortable with? So what aspects of dementia care are you least comfortable with? Treating, medication, denial, is that denial from the, the patient of like, patient or family member, this isn't really happening, or you're s sensing something and they're not on board. Can somebody talk about that a little bit? Mm -hmm. Like maybe they're not eating right or it's depression or loneliness, it's not actually cognitive decline. Okay, yeah, it's scary, right? <clears throat> Meds, 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 meds. <laughs> yes, meds. That's what I'm getting. Meds, new meds, medications, medication. Did I miss one? Medication, treatment. So new treatments, medications, how to, how to um, manage people on medications, start medications, um, testing. And these are the, these are, this is where Georgia Memory Net, this is what we're here for. Right. Not me. <laughs> I'm a sociologist. You don't want me helping you. <laughs> you want Dr. Law. You want Dr. Hales. Um, you know, uh, people who know the medications to be the ones doing that. All right. Yeah. Anything else on this? Kind of pressure points. Things that, what are things that do you think in your practice would help you feel more comfortable with these things? Over here. Anyone? Education. Education. Okay. We have some questions about education. Having a good social worker, having somebody in the clinic that you can rely on that knows what they're doing. Okay. Mm. Like what do you do with that person that just doesn't fit the mold or, you know, the top things that are on your radar? Um, who can you... Who can you call on to be your support for that? These are all really great, um, very helpful. All right, do we wanna know our last question about Georgia? Okay. You guys ready? It's a competition. <laughs> for nothing. No, <laughs> for pride, for pride, Alexis. <laughs> How All many right. counties in Georgia are named after women? We started with the easy ones, and now this one I think is a little I'll, I'll, more difficult. I'll give you a hint that Georgia has the second highest number of counties. It's like 200 and... 159 counties. 159. It's at least one. It's at least one. <laughs> oh, there we go. Somebody thinks it's nine. Again, we have 159 counties, so. It's, it's not 100. That's not an option, so it's not 100. Okay, raise your hand if you have not voted. They haven't voted. We have a couple tables still. No cheating. No cheating. <laughs> I see some cheating. <laughs> I see some Googling. <laughs> I was like, yes. We answer our oh. trivia questions by Googling. I, I do the same. I don't actually know the answer. Alexis knows the answer. I do know the answer. Are you guys ready? Drum roll. Ready? And the answer is? One. Oh. Woohoo. One county. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Bonus question, which one? Heart. Heart County. 
Heart County. Only County out of 159. Pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So back to it our. Is, I don't remember. Individual questions. Does anybody remember what who it's named after? Do you remember? Nancy, Nancy Hart. Hart. <laughs> we'll take it. Okay. All right. So on the line that we've been talking, what kinds of resources or education would make screening or management easier for you? What would you like Georgia MemoryNet to provide to make your jobs easier? So spanning anything from the patient, caregivers, families, your staff, yourself, do you, do you want resources, education? Do you want to educate your social worker? Do you want to? So we have education up here. What kind of education? What type? <coughs> Do you want lectures, oh, yeah. flyers, brochures, websites, webinars, podcasts? That's that. <laughs> so we see Care Navigator, um, guidelines, kind of a resource center that uh, could be accessible to you. A flow chart, so kind of like decision-making tools, is that what I'm understanding? Like, if this, go to here, don't go to here kind of thing, okay? Something easy to follow. Yeah. So I don't know if everyone can hear that, but kind of a what you're seeing, how to manage that. If they're, you know, if this, then this is how you can manage. If it's this, here's when to refer. Here's when you can manage these in in house. Um, I'm kind of thinking about like, you know, our IT support when you know the joke you call. It's like, did you turn your computer on and off? Yes, no, right? And then did you do this? And they they have this nice laid out thing. Unfortunately, our brains don't work as nicely as Adele sometimes. Um, but yeah, something along those lines. Resource discussion tools about new meds. Um, yeah, definitely resource centers. Practice questions. I think that's the first time we've seen that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's great. Like just things that you can go and like, learn and refresh your memory on. Um, I think that's great. Of your 15 minute visit? Yeah. So quick screeners, things that you can do that. Oh, yeah. OK. Embedded in the EMR. Other, Social worker other ideas. access. These are all great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. teaching somebody that's doing their first intake to do this so that it's not all on the, on the provider. Mm -hmm during that, again, 15 minute visit. Maybe you're lucky and you have 20. <laughs> These are great. These Other are thoughts or ideas? Screeners. All right, we'll go to the next question. So if we create this information, if this is available, how do you want to get it? So do you want it a paper, digital management, Targeted education, e consults, something else entirely. And you know we're going to ask what that is. <laughs> you know. <laughs> can you work on that for us? Can you, can I, you I make that happen? Chad's the man. <laughs> yeah, if we could just get what's in Chad's brain and mm -hmm. import it. That While we sleep, <laughs> yeah. While we sleep. While yeah. we sleep. Yeah, because I don't have enough time in the day. Mm -mm. E-consults, yeah. Neck and neck with targeted education. Um, right. The person who chose other, what is the other? Besides direct upload. Mm-hmm. Who's using e-consults while we're on Who is using e-consult? Raise your hand. Who knows about e-consult? Heard about it. 
couple. couple. But it seems like there's a lot of people that don't know about, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, this is helpful. Any other other things that we didn't include up here that we're missing? All right, we'll do the next question. In your opinion, what would be the best, most effective way for GMN, the Georgia Memory Net, to educate our primary care providers about dementia care? What's the best way for us to educate you? Remember your underscores. Or, or you can just make one long word and we have to, you know, figure out what that is. <laughs> it's our own little memory test. <laughs> the brain's really good at separating out the words of a really Dinner long Dinner programs, street. virtual programming. So for conferences, whoever said that, um, things like what we're doing today, larger things, longer things. You want to elaborate just a bit? Anyone? So if we were to think about um, a potential pre-conference um, education session at some of the conferences, what conferences are you guys already going to that you might be willing to come that additional first day to get a pre-conference, maybe targeted on the new medications? Which conferences are you guys attending that that would be a good mini piece? Just shout it out. GAFP, the AAFP conferences. We'll be in touch with you to get in touch with your local uh, health service centers. So if you guys can reach out to us, what do those meetings look like? You know what they are. If we could have some champions who would like to reach out to us to say, hey, we have a monthly provider um, dinner and we do presentations. Could you come do a presentation on medication management, a presentation on caregiver resources? We would be love. We would love to do that. We need your help to reach out to us. Yeah, I think another thing that I'm seeing up here are kind of bite-sized pieces of information. That conferences are good, symposia are great, but having short videos with good information that you could grab in a five minute span or bite sized information that you can, you know, take over time and build as opposed to like a day of inundation potentially. All right, and I think we just have one last question and then we're done for the day. I'm pretty sure, I think this is our last question. All right, so what else can we do, right? So we came up with these questions and we had ideas, but there's, I'm sure we're overlooking things, right? Things that, you know, me as a sociologist, Dr. Moore as a health economist, we're, we're evaluators, but we're not in your shoes. So what are some things that, other things that Georgia Memory Net can do to help you care for your patients that are living with ADRD? Color outside our lines. So if there's this kind of like, what did we miss? Maybe we didn't miss anything. We got it all. Adult day centers. I can't tell because these are different words, but is open part of that? Was that all one word or is open related? Okay. More community resources, dementia villages, family, patients without family care partners or, you know, friends or family church members that can help. An app, GM an app. Faster referrals. Faster referrals, okay. <laughs> I'm not laughing, it's just like, ah, yes, we will do 24 that. 7. Of course we will. We're working on it. Um, We're moving fast. For sure. Insurance issues, that's outside our box. Thank you. 
Well, I think, yeah, na how to navigate these things, right? Because mm -hmm. we are working across health centers um, that can make things difficult um, from a billing perspective. Mm. These are all amazing. Feedback Change. from referral. We have definitely heard that before. So you refer your patient back, you know, you, you refer your patient to Georgia Memory Net and they come back to you. Are we getting you the information that you need? How can we make that better? Um, we definitely would love input on that. Um, for those of you who have referred, we would love to sit down and talk with you, have kind of a one-on-one -on -one or a small focus group with those of you who have referred so that we can understand kind of what that process is like from your end. Um, because we don't, again, we're not in that seat. We we're not seeing it. So help us help you. And then for those of you who haven't referred, the same thing. We'd love to chat with you a little bit more to understand some of these barriers that you've faced or just you know, maybe more marketing or communication that could, could be helpful. I see a big word is family, and I see um, helping patients without family. Yeah. So that seems like that's a big, Absolutely. A big bowl. Okay. Thank you. Fantastic. I think we're actually out of time. Yes. So who got all three of the trivia questions correct? Which groups? Raise your hand. Anyone? Celebrate. Celebrate. Woohoo! All right. Yay! Thank you. Thank you for participating. The IT worked in the end. So. Yeah. Oh, oh, we did have one more question, but you can fill this out on your phone. We, we are out of time and we want to stay, we want to keep the program running. But um, just if you can put this in your phone, if you still have it up, what is the best way to follow up with you after you refer a patient? So this goes back to that referral. So fax, email, a, por a portal link, what can we do to get that information to you? How do you want to get it? And I think we're out of time. And if anybody has any feedback for us, we will take it. Thank you. And do your evaluation at the end, please. Thank you. And that's what this QR code is for, the evaluation at the end. I don't think that survey is active yet, so. Thank you so much, Dr. Bender and Dr. Moore. Up next, we have a provider, one of our top referring for providers, who attended the symposium last year. So he's here to share his experience. And welcome, Dr. Anthony Smith. Well, hello. Hi. Um, I'm just curious, how many other people attended last year's meeting down at Jekyll Island? 